Okay, I want to welcome all the visitors to ASP for this presentation on my accumulation of uniforms, the camouflage uniforms that I used in my military career. There was a book printed in 1955. It's called Realistic Combat Training and How to Conduct It by a Colonel Riggy. And that book influenced me a lot. And unfortunately, I couldn't find my copy, so I went on the internet today and it seems you can get a printed copy. Uh, luckily in my military career, because of my degree in education, they kept sticking me in training rather than plans or operation. So I ended up a lot of times being what was called an Op 4 controller, observer, an Op 4 commander. Basically, I led the bad guys in a lot of war games. Now, in the U.S. Army, if you were going to play the bad guy, usually you got issued the following. One was his pseudo-Russian helmet, which is nothing more than the M1 helmet liner put on this plastic thing. And for a uniform, you were given this here, which you can see, large aggressor jacket. All right? And you got to wear this wonderful jacket over your green pants or whatever your BDUs or whatever, and wear this helmet, and you were an automatically a bad guy. Well, I was very unhappy with that. And when I was assigned as an instructor to the Reserve Forces Intelligence School at Fort Bragg for at least 10 summers from 83 to 92, I was able to acquire, and you're going to see as we go through the collection, a large number of items that I felt increased the realism of the training. Fortunately for me, the Fort Bragg area has a lot of military stores, particularly on Yatkin Road and Bragg Boulevard. There were also some on Hay Street, but Hay Street, you had to be careful because parts of Hay Street were off limits to all GIs because of the large number of women of negotiable virtue. Now, next to this aggressor uniform, that was the issue bad guy uniform, is what we call the Red Dawn cost, uh, the Red Dawn camouflage. When they made the movie Red Dawn in 1985, for some reason, somebody didn't do their research, and they created this camouflage for the movie. And I guess after the movie was over, they were selling these in the numerous military and pawn shops in the Fort Bragg area. And it was cheap and it was, it was a pullover, and they gave you a camouflage pattern. But unfortunately, somebody really didn't do their research, as I will show you what the Russian uniform really looked like. All right, next to it here, I have East German. Now, we were getting some better training. We were getting fake East German books for, for people to carry. You would stick your military ID card in this pocket, and you'd have all this information as if you were a member of the East German Armed Forces, okay? And that was, you know, they were upgrading the training, you know. And then what happened was, this is an East German uniform. Then East Germany went and collapsed on us. The Berlin Wall went down. The next thing you know, there was a flood of fantastic East German uniforms to the point you could buy them to the paint in your house, changing the oil on your car. I mean, they were cheap and they were great and they were the real deal because they had to get rid of them. And a little war story or my church wanted to do a passion play and they asked me, can I? Can we have some army uniforms? We can't get Roman uniforms, you know, segmenta armor and all the other good stuff. So they wanted me to give them U.S. army uniforms. And I said, no, 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 no. If you want to have somebody persecute Christ, he's going to have to be in an East German uniform. And I gave him East German uniforms. This is a Polish one. You can see the Polish symbol. No crown on it. That's one of the good ways you can tell. If it's got the crown, it's the real Poland. If it doesn't have the crown, it's communist Poland, okay? Because the communists felt that the crown re reflected royalty. The Poles considered it and reflected independence. So if you get a Polish eagle, no crown, that's under communist rule. You can see their camouflage pattern was very similar to the raindrop pattern of the East Germans. But I could never find the uniform. I was just lucky enough to find a hat, and later on I found a helmet, which was similar to the Soviet helmet but had the Polish eagle on it, no crown. The next uniform is a mystery uniform, and I'm hoping that people who watch this make this an interactive video. A lot of the stuff I'm gonna show you I know very little about. This one here is obviously a fake Soviet airborne patch. The person who gave me this claimed he was on the SEER committee. That stands for Survival, Escape, Resistance, and Evasion. And he was supposed to play a Soviet official or an interrogator. And he claimed he had this uniform custom made. It was so well made, I can't see it as being handmade. But it's an excellent brown version of the U.S. desert camouflage. At first I thought maybe they just took the U.S. camouflage, dipped it in dye. But the threads are brown, the buttons are brown, 
It's got the white cord, pockets, lining. So I'm hoping that somebody who's watching this video can go, I know what that is. Anyway, the man told me it was the uniform that he wore as a interrogator uh, for the SEER course. Uh, other people that were in the SEER course told me, no, they wore the de uh, what's called urban camouflage. It's the woodland pattern, but it's made in black, gray, and white. And that's what they wore. So this is more of a mystery uniform. It's a shame. I like it. I think it make a great... Most of the time we think of camouflage as multicolored. Well, sometimes a drab color like brown or olive drab works. The next uniform is a Soviet uniform. It's their Soviet camouflage. Why the people who made Red Dawn couldn't have gotten their hands on this when I got my hands on it is always beyond me. And I have two versions here. They just seem to be a different shade. But as you can see, it's, it's a camouflage pattern. It's even got a face mask, which probably got misplaced on, on me here. But this was like a jumpsuit in the Soviet camouflage style. All right, the next uniform that I'm gonna show you is Czechoslovakian. And it's got, to me, too much yellow. And for whatever reason, this was made available in the porn store shops. So I picked it up and it's Czechoslovakian. Now, how do I know this is Russian? That's Czechoslovakian. Because next to us here is the Warsaw Pact Field Uniforms chart, which I think we will show you in greater detail in this video. This was an intelligence poster, 1985, that we used in our classrooms when we were teaching identification of Soviet equipment and, and uniforms uh, to, to our interrogators. Uh, that was one of my jobs. I was an instructor in the interrogator committee. And one of my specialties was, of course, teaching people uh, uniform identification. Later on, when I ran Army training and evaluation programs and lanes training for military police units, we would do the same thing. They had to learn to give what's called a salute report. Size, activity, location, unit, or uniforms, time, and equipment. And describing, you know, who did you see? Was it was it East German soldiers? Was it Czechoslovakian wearing his camouflage? Was it Russian troops with the, uh, you know, camouflage uniforms, things like that? And uh, Polish, again, you see here Polish uniform, which is very similar to Polish helmets are available now in great quantity. Now, if you're gonna collect military uniforms, I haven't been to Fort Bragg since 1992, but if you go to Hamburg, Pennsylvania, you go to Cabela's. Near it is a small strip mall that has an army surplus store that has a fantastic selection of camouflage uniforms, both American and foreign. So if anybody wants to collect uniforms and you're in the Pennsylvania area and you go to Cabela's, check out that army surplus store in the strip mall nearby. Now, I've been out of the army since 2002, mandatorily retired, but should they ever call me back, this is how I would supply my enemy. I would give them a Masood hat, I'd give them a scarf, give them an M65 field jacket and BDU, and you got instant Taliban. Next uniform is Italian. They came out in 1927. Italy was one of the first countries to come out with a multicolored camouflage uniform. And it's got reinforced elbows and reinforced knees. We, my unit used these because they were cheap. I think, I forget what we paid for them, like less than $10 for a set. So we chipped in, bought 10, I think a dozen of these, and we used to equip our op four with them just so they'd have a different uniform than wearing the regular BDUs of the American Army. And surprisingly, this was a very good camouflage when used at Fort AP Hill, Fort Pickett, Fort Indian Town Gap, but it's Italian. Now you might see pictures of, of German soldiers wearing something like it. Uh, at the end of World War II, German soldiers that were assigned in northern Italy, some of them were issued this kind of camouflage. The next camouflage is, of course, for the snow. And this is supposed to be was sold to me, anyway, as West German. And it's basically, you throw it over your uniform. And these were extremely cheap if you bought them by the dozen. So I bought them by the dozen. <laughs> but never got a chance to use them because I never got a war game in the snow. But my son's Boy Scouts, they loved it. They used to wear it for the Klondike Derby. And if you find these things, 
You can reverse them inside out, put a red cross on it, play Templar, whatever you want. But it's a nice, easy, convenient. Now, that store in Hamburg, they've got this as a padded uniform, a West German padded uniform, rather than something you just throw over the top as a parka. The next one is a rain suit that I used to use. It says made in Germany on it. There's a tag. All right, so you can find the tag here. Sturm, made in Germany. Okay, and there's some other markings on there. 100% cotton. It's water resistant. But it seems to be in the German World War II pattern. So I don't know what the story on this was. Whether this was made for some uh, movie production or what. But it was inexpensive and it was waterproof and it was convenient for me to use for some of my war games. All right. The next uniform is Dutch, Holland, Netherlands, whatever term you want. There's the flag and there's the markings. So we can get them there. It's got a NATO marking on it too. It's a little thicker than the uh, regular uniform, so it's probably for you know a warmer climate. But again, if anybody that's watching this video knows more about it, can describe it and give us detail, please refer to where you saw it. All right. The next uniform, you can see how long it is too. It's a nice warm jumpsuit. All right. The next one is your French camouflage, sometimes called the lizard pattern. Um, one of the, the training, it says polyester on here, cotton, let's see what else the tag says, okay. But this is what's called the French lizard pattern, all right. I don't know whether this was made for the movies or what. Now, uh, there are two movies where this uniform is prominent. The first one is the Battle of Algiers, which is a training film that's used in special forces on urban combat and urban terrorism. But that film is black and white, so you really don't get the value of this. This movie, though, does. That's called The Lost Command with Anthony Quinn, and this uniform is prominently used in it. I've always had a fondness for the cap. For a long time, the caps were available, but the uniforms weren't. And I was very fortunate to find a uniform to go with the cap that was fairly common. The next uniform is Portuguese. You can see its influence from the French. Okay, it's, it's, it's very similar to the French lizard pattern. Uh, a friend of mine who immigrated to the United States said when he was drafted into the Portuguese army and sent to Angola, he got to wear this, but he told me outright, he says, the African sun will bleach these colors real fast. So if you run into one of these and it's a lighter shade, it's a been there, done that uniform. All right, next to it is your Portuguese poncho and shelter half and tarp and everything combined together in the same camouflage pattern. This too has a nice hat to go with it, which I have always had a fondness for in the back. I was going to try to find somebody to make me one of these in a BDU pattern, but never could. But it's, again, a nice convenient hat that you can fold up, carry, you know, under your epaulette or wherever you want. All right. The next uniform, okay, let me give you the war story on this. This was given to me by a guy who came back from Desert Storm. Now. If anybody here knows, is that really the Iraqi uniform symbol? I don't know. Now, it looks very much like the British uh, pa um, disruptive pattern. Now, I got this from a guy real cheap. He brought it back from Desert Storm. I was in a pawn shop in, Fort, in the Fort Bragg area, and they had the desert version. And I was looking at it, but it was very, very expensive, so I didn't buy it. At that time, we were working with the Special Air Squadron. In the, in the 1980s and 90s, every other year, they would send a team of four or five SAS men to teach us counter-interrogation techniques. And it was, it was cross-training. They would train us in their methods. And I was talking to the guy, and I said, you know, I saw that Iraqi uniform. They seemed to copy your uniform. And he started laughing. He goes, where's the story? He goes, in 1989, the Ministry of Defense had realized that they had stocks and stocks of desert camouflage and they were still buying more and it was more than they really needed. So they offered to sell it to their friends, the Iraqis. So the Iraqis ended up with disruptive material pattern in the desert that was British Army issue. And then when they had to fight the Iraqis in 90, 91, uh, there was a problem of friendly fire. So what they did, similar to what happened with the Battle of San Jacinto, where the Texac Texacanos 
had to give the Tijanos little cards to stick in their hats so they wouldn't be mistaken for Santa Ana's troops. So what they did is many Commonwealth soldiers were given bits of American kit, like the desert camouflage or a boonie hat with the chocolate chip, anything to make them look a little different from the Iraqis they were fighting. The next uniform, and I really want you to get a close-up on the tag here if you can get it. This one here I obtained from a school teacher who suddenly had inherited or got like three or four of these jackets. He was for, for months he tried to get me to buy one. I finally did. It is the most beautiful camouflage. Whenever I wear it to gun shows, I get people coming up to me, where'd you get it, where can I get one? So if anybody's watching this video, if you know where to get this disruptive pattern material temperate climate, I love this jacket. After I started using it, I never didn't want to wear my M65 field jacket at all. It's got nice internal pockets, got big external pockets. It is a comfortable, well-designed jacket, and I was able to find a helmet in the same pattern. All right. The next bit of camouflage is the danger of buying things mail order. Okay. Uh, somewhere along the line, somebody advertised that you could get um, Rhodesian camouflage. So I ordered it. And unless Rhodesia or Zimbabwe is part of the Northern Territories made in Pakistan, I doubt this is Rhodesian camouflage. But it says made in Pakistan, so that's good enough. Again, this is nice, easy. You could throw it over your uniform if you were playing op for, just to be different. Um, getting this disruptive British material. I, I mail ordered for a boonie hat. It's beautiful, no labels, no nothing, and it is a different shade. But this is just, I love the DPM, okay? The next one here, again, I hope one of our viewers can tell us, this is a quality piece of material. This is not some cheap put together for Hollywood. But the guy who even sold it to me, the tag, all the tag I have is this little tag, which is kind of meaningless. All right, extra large, 122. I have no idea who made this, what country it's from, whatever. But it's you know, DPM, and it's here. And I'm hoping that this video causes a lot of interaction with people making, responding to us. Now, we showed you the chart. That is an excellent field uh, chart on field uniforms of the Warsaw Pact. And I hope collectors, wherever you are, it'll help you find the real thing. Um, yeah, it is beret. I don't know if anybody can tell me what this is and the color or anything else. Again, I, I acquired this thing and I still don't know what country it's from. It's one of those mysteries. So we have this selection of uniforms. Hopefully if you're a uniform collector, we've given you some ideas and maybe you can give us information which we can then share with a lot of other people in regards to what are these uniforms and uh, where they came from and add to the general knowledge of the collecting field. So again, I thank you very much, and I hope you continue to watch ASP Productions on uniforms, bayonets, and other items of military. Fantastic. Thank you, Stan. All right. Good. We're good.